Hello everyone, this is Martin with Steadfast and Orion in Houston. And I want to show you guys how I dispatch or how I try to dispatch throughout the day. A lot of people in trucking think, you got to load, here you go driver, just go. That's the easiest way to dispatch. You got a driver available, here you go. But that's not how you make a driver money. Or that's not how you make the business money either. The best way I can advise people if you're going to be dispatching truck drivers is to get used to reading maps. Whether you're dispatching locally in Houston or you're dispatching over the road, you're dispatching regional, whatever it is that you're doing, you have to get used to reading a map. Uh, and I would also recommend having a key map to the side, not only depending on Google Maps, because it's always, you're going to run into things sometimes that are not necessarily updated on Google Maps. So having a key map, and I would advise every driver to have a key map because sometimes your Wi-Fi or your internet service is not good and now you're calling the dispatcher for help but the dispatcher's not out there helping because he's not seeing what you're seeing. Not all the time at least. Sometimes the dispatcher can help from the phone but in reality, we need a lot more help from the driver out there than, you know, we can't do a lot. We can't do everything from inside the, from the office. In other words, we can give a driver phone number or whatever but different anyway I got I got a sidetrack anyway get used to reading a map um, in this case I have a Houston map the Harris County area so you have to know more or less get used if you we actually sat in front of this for years so we were able to read it you know pretty good uh, now the second one would be keep track of your times it's very important that you know when you're gonna dispatch something at what time or better yet your traffic conditions of that certain city uh, this is like I said, this is Houston. So this right here is the Beltway or the toll road. The drivers don't take that. Very, 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 very rare that they're going to take that. Sometimes drivers that are not from town take that because they don't know. But I'll give you an example. This is the 290 area that's been under construction for about 50 years, I think. <laughs> and this is the 59 area. This is the 59 area from point to point right here. Basically, now this is the 290 area, and to get to the port or to Bayport at Barber's Cut, it's in this area. Okay, so obviously, you can't just cross like that, it's not an airplane, but it takes about 45 minutes to an hour on average. From actually, even from here, I'll put it from here that's 45 going north, you go to Dallas, but you don't want to go to Dallas, you want to come to Houston. But, anyways, basically, from any points right here. Going towards the port area, it's no less than 30, 45 minutes. And I'm saying 30, 45 minutes from these two areas. From over here, it's closer to 45 to an hour. Drive one way. Now, imagine you have a customer or you have a warehouse that calls you that says they're not going to have anything ready until 3 p.m., but it cuts off today at 5. So you got to be in these areas, which are highly, highly trafficked areas or high traffic areas, going to the port at 3 p.m. when you only have two hours to spare in some cases. Now, if the port closes at 6, you got three hours to spare. But now you're hoping that no accidents are on the road, that you don't get a flat tire, that no brake issues, and believe it or not, two to three hours is not a lot of time in trucking. I know people think it is, and it's really, really, really not. It can be, it depends on the situation, but it's really not. Now. The important thing on the third one that I would stress to a dispatcher or to a company to tell a driver is that there's no one more important than the customer. My personal opinion is the customer pays for everybody to work. Basically, they pay for the building, for us to keep operating, for the lights. The drivers also help us put all food on our table, but we... As a trucking company, we also help drivers put food on their tables as well. It's a give-give. We all, we're all here to help each other out. It's not one person is better than the other, or the drivers are less than the company, or the company is less than the driver. As a dispatcher, you can't even think that way. You have to think about how can you be more productive for both your customer and the driver that you have dispatching. Now, the way I like to think about it is, not only is this time, but this is also fuel for the driver. Think about how many miles is it from here to here for the driver. I've had a lot of instances where 
the customer tells you, well, the load is not going to be ready until 3 p.m., but the, you have to have a driver on standby. And it's like 9 o'clock in the morning, and you have a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things to do. You really honestly sometimes can't do that because there's a lot of things that a lot of customers that you have to serve. So you have that load in the back of your mind. So you try to keep a driver, let's just say, as close to this area as possible. If he just happens to drop right here at 2 p.m., okay, then you bop tell him right there. He's not that far. But if the load's not gonna be ready, and you just, all your drivers are dispatched because you don't want your driver just sitting not making money. And a lot of customers will say, yes, we're gonna pay, and sometimes they really don't. And it's happened more times than not. A lot of times what happens is, have your driver on standby, and we have the driver on standby, and then the load gets canceled, the load doesn't get done, or, or the load just doesn't ship. Then the driver we had on standby loses the day, and sometimes, believe it or not, there are customers that do not pay that time. So, believe it or not, a lot of trucking companies are very, very, very weary of waiting on something like that because of what has happened to us in the past. And that's in general. I don't, I mean, I'm being serious, honest on that one. Um, the customers do come first, the drivers do come first, the employees do come first. Everyone, in my opinion, comes first. But it's hard to try to bring everyone together when everyone wants what they want for themselves. The driver wants to make more money, the customer wants their things right away, and then obviously the office personnel is trying to get everything done to please everyone at the same time. So keeping track of your time, knowing how to read a map, Knowing where your drivers are, you know, you can have driver A right here, driver B right there, driver C right here, and you know, driver D right here. So you have to know where your drivers are at all times without having to go to your computer, without having to go to your paperwork. As a dispatcher, it's best you have everything in your head, and I'm being truthful. Thank you guys for listening. This is Martin. I have a lot more videos to post, and we're here to help.